Welcome, age of vintage society. Jean Seberg dreamed of being a movie star. She had to settle for being the face of the French New Wave movement. Her starring turn in Jean-Luc Godard's Breathless secured her place in film history and made her one of the most beloved actors in the European film industry. But true happiness eluded her. How Jean Seberg was driven to madness by a covert FBI program. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Jean Seberg, star of the French New Wave. Jean Seberg, an actress who was targeted by the FBI's COINTELPRO program, which used intimidation and defamation to discredit potential radicals. Seberg is also one of the best known targets of the FBI COINTELPRO project. Her victimization was rendered as a well documented retaliation for her support of the Black Panther Party in the 1960s. She was an idealist who got in way over her head and paid the price. She believed in just causes and wasn't afraid to put her name to them, but she should have been. We're talking of a time when J. Edgar Hoover's FBI engineered a smear campaign. She battled depression all throughout her life, endured one abusive marriage after another and suffered the tragic loss of a child. But the biggest battle Seberg faced was against her own government. Her sudden death in 1979 led to more questions than answers and blew the lid off one of the most disturbing government programs in American history. Jean Seberg was born in Marshalltown, Iowa on November 13, 1938. Her father, Edward, was the local pharmacist, while her mother, Dorothy, worked as a substitute teacher. She had one sister and two brothers. Seberg was of Swedish extraction. Her original family name was Carlson. When her grandfather immigrated to America from Sweden in 1882, he decided there were simply too many Carlsons. He took the name Seberg as a nod to the seas and mountains of his homeland. As a teenager, Seberg earned some spare cash by working as a babysitter. One of her clients grew up to be a Tony-nominated actress, Mary Beth Hurt. Born Mary Beth Supinger is best known for her roles in The World According to Garp and The Age of Innocence. Seberg was a huge movie fan. She was especially enamoured with the smouldering young actor Marlon Brando. Seberg went so far as to write Brando a letter, inviting him to come visit her parents' house. When they met years later, Brando asked if the invitation was still open. A young Seberg enrolled at the University of Iowa to study theatre. At the last minute, she decided to try her hand in Hollywood instead despite only having been in high school productions and a single summer of professional acting experience. She began her film career when she was 19. Her first role was in the British-American film St. Joan. The film was an adaptation of Bernard Shaw's play of the same name, based on the life of the famous French warrior Joan d'Arc. Seberg portrayed the title role of Joan, the film received a lot of criticism due to historical inaccuracies. Seberg made her acting debut in famed director Otto Preminger's St. Joan in 1957, beating out 18,000 other aspiring actresses for the part. While filming St. Joan's burning at the stake scene, there was an accident with one of the special effects, and Seberg suffered painful burns on her stomach. Though she was otherwise uninjured, her reaction to the sudden fire was so realistic that Preminger kept some of the shot in the film. Over the next two decades, she starred in at least 32 films, making her mark on pop culture both on and off screen. In 1958, Seberg married Francois Muriel, a French lawyer. Not long after the marriage, the union turned violent, to use Muriel's words. Seberg divorced him in 1960. It would be the first of three official marriages for Seberg. In 1960, with her short cropped hair and natural raw performance, 
Seberg became an international icon as the girlfriend of a young criminal, Jean-Paul Belmondo, in Jean-Luc Godard's new wave French masterpiece, Breathless. Throughout the 1960s, she had one foot in Paris and one foot in Hollywood. She married her second husband, noted writer Romain Gary, 24 years her senior, in 1962, and had their son Diego earlier the same year. In the late 1960s, Seberg began associating herself with a number of radical groups, most notably the Black Panthers. Seberg wasn't just being provocative, however. She was actively involved in the group's activities. According to one Black Panther leader, Seberg donated huge sums of money and at one point was even arrested for misdemeanor charges. At the time, people thought the arrest was connected to Seberg running guns for the Black Panther's militant wing. Seberg had always supported anti-racist causes, dating back to her teenage years in Iowa. Her involvement with the Black Panthers seems to stem from a brief relationship with the activist Hakim Jamal. Jamal was a fervent supporter of the black radical leader Malcolm X. Being involved with the Black Panthers could have endangered Seberg's Hollywood career. To keep her activities secret, she used a code name, Aretha. But let's stop for a minute and think about it. Did the FBI track Gene Seberg and the Black Panthers? What is the Seberg true story? When the actress returned to Hollywood in 1968 to make Paint Your Wagon, Airport and Macho Callahan, the FBI became interested in her because not only had she donated money to the Black Panthers, she had begun an affair with a married African-American activist. Its smear campaign claimed Seberg was pregnant with a Black Panthers child. LA Times gossip columnist Joyce Haber publicized it in a thinly veiled post, causing her to go into premature labor and give birth to a daughter, Nina Hart Gary. The little girl died two days later and was buried in Marshalltown, but not before her coffin was opened to prove the baby was white. Seberg was devastated by the loss and was said thereafter to have attempted suicide annually on the anniversary of her daughter's death. In the aftermath of her daughter's demise and in light of the FBI's continued harassment, Seberg's mental health steadily deteriorated and she attempted to take her own life several times. Seberg's involvement with the Black Panther Party was more than just ideological. She was said to have been arrested for running guns for the movement and, according to Elaine Brown, the only female party leader. She regularly gave large sums of money to the organization. Seberg was eventually unofficially blacklisted from Hollywood, along with Jane Fonda and other left-leaning stars of the era. The FBI estimated that Seberg gave $10,500, about $72,000 in 2019, to the party, mostly in large checks. Sources close to the actress dispute the veracity of this claim and suggest that the Bureau's evidence was fabricated, if only because of the mention of checks. The actress had a clandestine process for donating to the party, which she did only in cash and through intermediaries. After her affair with Hakim Jamal, Seberg allegedly became romantically involved with another Black Panther, Raymond Masai Hewitt. This relationship put her under increased scrutiny by the FBI. Hewitt, the Minister of Education for the Panther Party, had long been a target of the FBI's COINTELPRO program, and his involvement with Seberg was the perfect opportunity for the Bureau to up the ante on its smear campaign. The FBI's fearsome surveillance, stalking and harassment of Seberg under J. Edgar Hoover's COINTELPRO program is well known. After the actress began publicly supporting the Black Panther Party, officials orchestrated a meticulously insidious mission designed to cause her embarrassment and to cheapen her image with the public. The smear campaign began with the false rumour that Seberg's child had been fathered by a Black Panther, but didn't end there. As sources confirm, Seberg subsequently suffered years of politically motivated burglaries, 
wiretapping, stalking and international surveillance from US military intelligence, US Secret Service and CIA, among others. In 1972, Seberg married director Dennis Berry. Like her first husband, Berry soon turned abusive. Though Seberg would separate from him, they never formally divorced. Not many people know about Seberg's most interesting affair. She began a brief relationship with Clint Eastwood while working on the musical western Paint Your Wagon. Not only was Eastwood already married, but he was also seeing another actress on set. Eastwood ghosted Seberg as soon as shooting wrapped. Eastwood's indifference was difficult for Seberg. She had divorced her husband, expecting that she and Eastwood would get married. On August 30th, 1979, she disappeared. Her then husband, Ahmed Hasni, claimed that he went to bed with her after they saw a movie together and woke up to find her gone. Jean Seberg vanished. She was found dead and decomposing nine days later in the back seat of her car with an empty bottle of barbiturates and a note which read, Forgive me, I can no longer live with my nerves. A week after Seberg's death in 1979, the FBI officially admitted to having targeted her and their actions were widely denounced in the media. Though Seberg's suicide was publicised as inevitable, Given her history of depression, many investigators thought otherwise. In 1980, a year after her death, charges were filed against persons unknown. Police hypothesised someone had been present at the scene of her death and had refused to act on her behalf to save her. These conjectures were based on the amount of alcohol in Seberg's blood, which investigators claimed was enough to have rendered her comatose and incapable of even getting into her car, let alone driving it. Police didn't find liquor bottles in or around the vehicle, which implied that she'd either consumed beverages before, somehow driving, or that someone had taken away said evidence after the fact. Suspicion fell on Jean's consort before her death, actor Ahmed Hasni, who was actually her husband. Hasni was reputed to have abused her. He also subsequently completely disappeared after selling off her apartment, memorabilia and worldly goods. Seberg's ex-husband, Romain Gary, denounced the FBI in an anguished press conference shortly after his ex-wife's death. In an act that cast even more darkness on the tragedy of Seberg's life, her ex-husband, Romain Gary, took his own life by gunshot just a year after her death. His suicide note was said to have detailed his anguish and heartbreak over her demise, though he also specified that his decision was the result of a nervous depression he could no longer live with. Sadly, it was too late. The damage was already done. The stress of the situation is widely believed to have contributed to Seberg's overdose and the subsequent loss of her child. It's possible that the world will never know what happened to Seaberg during those nine days. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Jean Seaberg? Do you think she rightly got so much harassment from the FBI?